We want to look into the ethics of using genetic engineering as a solution to life-ruining genetic diseases. Genetic engineering is a deliberate modification of the characteristics of an organism by manipulating its genetic material. One type of genetic engineering is gene therapy, which is the introduction of normal genes into cells in place of missing or defective ones in order to correct genetic disorders. With CRISPR-Cas9 technology becoming more sophisticated by the day, the therapeutic possibilities are endless. Currently in the UK, there has been no trials or experimentation with prenatal gene therapy as it is illegal, but if these laws were changed, then it would allow for this technology to be improved in a controlled environment, and solely for health benefits, without the risk of CRISPR-Cas9 being used to make so-called designer babies, that is, children who have been genetically engineered for purely cosmetic purposes. Although there are many disagreements whether genetic engineering is ethical on embryos or not, the debate was created as a result of the discovery of CRISPR, which stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. The Cas9 protein, also found inside bacteria, works alongside the CRISPR DNA strand and cuts the DNA affected by the virus. Scientists have found that they can cut undesirable genes of any living organism and insert new strands of DNA which provide more desirable genomes and have the potential to eliminate all genetic diseases, common or not. And from this discovery, scientists have the responsibility of researching into this technology more to greatly benefit those suffering from genetic disorders. But why would some people want genetically edit embryos? Well, the technology can prevent children from being born with genetic diseases. This could potentially stop lifelong suffering and provide children who have these diseases with a normal childhood by replacing defective genes causing the condition. The science behind CRISPR technology is constantly evolving, but it is already used in crops that you eat on a daily basis. And in 2018, scientist He Zhuang Kui made headlines around the world as he created the first ever genetically edited babies. It's extremely controversial and he was actually sent to prison, showing to the world that the law can in fact still control CRISPR technology from provoking a slippery slope to designer babies. Despite this, the children were genetically resistant to HIV and are still believed to be healthy. This genetic engineering would also mean less time spent in hospital by patients and therefore less resources used. Whilst not only decreasing the extensive strain on the NHS, this would impact many patients' well-being. Not only will they now potentially not spend extended periods of time in hospital, they may have a chance at living a more normal life. And whilst there should never be any negative societal view on patients with these diseases, this will thoroughly aid them in having a better quality of life. Many people are also worried about the long-term impact of genetic engineering resulting in designer babies, but there is a solution. Laws would need to be put in place limiting the uses of genetic engineering only to health-related incidents, and the regulations surrounding who would be eligible for the procedure would have to be very specific. For example, the disease may have to be potentially fatal or incurable. There would also have to be detailed training and research for the doctors who were able to complete the procedure. This is because they would have role responsibility and therefore hold a duty to protect the patient and their family. By making this treatment available on the NHS, we have to ensure they abide by the ethical pillars. We are treating the baby by reducing or taking away potentially fatal disease and improving the baby's quality of life. Thus, we'll be doing good and benefits will be fulfilled. By having specific eligibility requirements, we are ensuring that all babies have an equal opportunity to be able to access this treatment and carefully selecting patients based on medical criteria as opposed to other things. We are not modifying a baby for cosmetic reasons, which would not be in the patient's best interest. We are hopefully setting up a baby's life for normality or as close to normality so that they are able to do any opportunity without the health setback, non-maleficence. As the baby cannot make decisions for themselves, we'll be going off the consent and the plans of the mother and thus solidifying patient autonomy. All in all, we are not trying to demonise any sort of condition, but are trying to improve the quality of lives for young people and ensuring a healthier well-being.